Okay, so now we're moving on to the second type of tissue, which is connective tissue. And what I'd like to start with when we think of connective tissue is actually the things that they all have in common. So they are all three going to have in common that they are going to have cells. And, okay, well, you know what a cell is, but specifically, they're going to be specialized cells with special functions uh, depending on the type of connective tissue. Okay, so the cells in each type of connective tissue may not be the same. It's going to depend on what's the functin function of that connective tissue, and then they're going to have special cells. Okay. They're all going to have fibers, and these um, are going to be long uh, proteins. Okay, now which fibers they have and how they're arranged and all that sort of stuff, but these are long proteins that are found outside of the cell. They're made by the cell, um, but they're found outside of the cell, and we'll talk more about their functions. Okay, and then. The last thing that we're going to have is going to be ground substance, okay? And what this is, you can see right here, this is going to contain fluid, proteins, carbohydrates, glycoproteins, a whole range of things. And again, um, so just to be clear, every connective tissue will have cells, fibers, ground substance, but um, what specific cells, specific fibers, what's specifically in the ground substance is going to be different for each type. And you should know that if you combine fibers and ground substance, we get the extracellular matrix. Okay, so that's the fibers plus the ground substance. Okay, and all of that together gives you the extracellular matrix. So, um, what I'd like to do is first talk about fibers and how you see them in the microscope, how they look different. Okay, so if we both go back to our notes packets, um, we'll see here in this chart that you can, it's a place for the three different types of fibers, so you can have elastic fibers. You can have collagen fibers. And you can have particular fibers. Okay, now elastic, I kind of think of elastic fiber as a little bit like um, a slinky or a coil, and it can stretch and then it rebounds, and it can stretch and it rebounds. So basically, and you, I mean, that's actually important in the skin. That's what allows me to stretch like this, and then my skin doesn't get stuck like that. You can see. It pops back. Well, a lot of that is those elastic fibers in that deep tissue of the skin that can be stretched out but then recoils back to its original length. Okay. These are generally under the microscope, they're generally going to be dark staining and mostly straight lines. Okay, and thin. So if we look back on this image here, you can see this curves a little bit, but it's mostly one straight line. Here's another elastic fiber right here going down. Here's another one, mostly straight, so an elastic fiber. Now collagen, these fibers, they're going to be um, flexible but strong. So not flexible as in you can pull them and they'll recoil, but you can bend them a little bit, but they keep that tissue strong. Okay, so under the microscope they tend to be lighter staining, um, thicker, okay, and uh, mostly straight lines again. Okay, so if we look here you can see this right here that's uh, more of a dark pink going straight down and it's thicker. That's collagen. You can see another collagen fiber here, another one here. Um, so those are elastic and collagen fibers. Now the last one is reticular fibers. 
you notice here they're also dark, but they almost look a little bit like a net. Okay, see this over here? All of this dark fiber looks a bit like a net. And so they are going to be dark staining, but net-like is how I describe them. Okay. Now, uh, I'll let you fill in this chart here, but I'm going to give it to you in a different way uh, using the FreeMind software. Okay, so we've got three different types of connective tissues. We've got supporting connective tissues. We've got fluid connective tissues. And then we've got connective tissue proper. Now, connective tissue proper is going to be a lot of your packing materials, and you're going to have two general types. You're going to have loose, and you're going to have dense connective tissues. Okay, so what does that mean? What are we talking about loose versus dense? Well, the big difference between loose versus dense is going to be how close the fibers are spaced. So here you can see that there's a lot of white space between the fibers, okay? And again here, a lot of white space between the fibers. So that means that the fibers are loosely packed, they're farther away. But if we come down here, man, these things are pretty densely packed. There's a little bit of white space, but not a whole lot in comparison to what we just saw. So this would be an example of a dense connective tissue. Again here, look, there's very little white space. Most of these fibers are pretty densely packed together. Okay. Now, if we look at the different types of um, connective tissues within loose and dense categories, again, we're going to have uh, three here. So we're going to have areolar connective tissue, we're going to have adipose, and we are going to have reticulum. Okay. So let me show you um, what these different ones are going to look like. Okay. So here we see we've got a loose connective tissue, but mostly we see elastic and we see collagen fibers. And so when we see that, this is areolar. Over here, we've got a loose connective tissue, but we see mostly reticular fibers, okay? And so this means we have reticular connective tissue. And then the last one is going to be um, adipose. And this here, um, I've had students describe it to me. It looks like a bunch of marshmallows smushed together. Um, and so this is an adipocyte. So this is adipose connective tissue. This stores your fat. Okay. Now if we're looking on the dense connective tissues, we're going to have three types. Dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. Okay. Now what we're going to see with elastic is that we have densely packed elastic fibers. So that's going to be the biggest clue that we have elastic um, dense connective tissue. Oops. But the other types that we are going to have are dense regular and dense irregular. So what's the difference between those two? Well, the biggest clue here is going to be that dense regular, all of the fibers go pretty much the same direction. So you notice it looks like all of these collagen fibers go from this side of the screen over to this side of the screen. Okay. If we are looking at dense irregular, and let me get to a good place to see this, okay, um, 
here again you notice dense regular essentially go all the same direction but dense irregular you can see it's densely packed but these fibers are really just going every which direction some go one direction some go the other now there is a purpose for that dense regular connective tissues are very strong it's collagen fibers but these are going to resist forces from pretty much one direction so you can pull on them from one direction or the other but not from off the side or in an angle the tissue is more likely to tear in that case on the other hand dense irregular well you can pull on it pretty much every way every angle you want to and there'll be some fibers there to resist that pull okay so those are pretty much the options um, right here for connective tissue proper again we have loose or dense and then we can classify them into these possibilities all right, now for supporting connective tissue, um, or actually let me see what your homework lesson does next. So the homework lesson next does fluid connective tissues. You're going to have two possibilities, blood and lymph, okay? And so um, your book only gives a picture of blood. And so what you're going to notice here is the characteristic red blood cells. They lack a nucleus, so they look kind of white on the inside. And then you have white blood cells, and you're going to see these darkly purple staining nuclei. In some case, these staining nuclei are lobed. And then you may see these very dark, very small purple little dots, and those are called platelets. Those are import important for blood clotting. White blood cells are going to help fight off disease, um, and they're part of the immune response. And uh, then red blood cells carry oxygen from your lungs to your tissues, um, and that's uh, their main function, although there are others. Um, and so blood is always going to be found inside blood vessels and heart, uh, and lymph is inside of these vessels called lymphatic tissues. They help drain extra fluid sitting on the tissues and bring it back to the bloodstream. So again here if we're talking about fluid connective tissues we would say there are two types, blood and lymph. Okay. Now as we're going through this I'm kind of giving you a basic structure but what I'd like to see you add in that might be helpful is to think what makes connective tissue proper unique? What makes fluid connective tissue unique? What makes supporting connective tissue unique? Um, and so think about those sorts of things as we go through these structures. Okay, so for supporting connective tissue, you're going to have two types. Bone, these are going to be ones that give you structure, give your body shape, give your body protection from in physical impact. And so bone is a supporting connective tissue, and cartilage is a supporting connective tissue. And with cartilage, we'll have three different types of cartilage. Okay, so again, say bone and cartilage. And for cartilage, we're going to have elastic cartilage. We are going to have hyaline cartilage, and we are going to have fibrocartilage. Uh, some books call it fibrous cartilage. It's the same thing. Okay. So let's look here. So one thing that we're going to see with bone, um, and let me actually get closer up to. A better image here. So what we see immediately whenever we look at bone is I think tree rings. You can almost see these as the ring. This would be the center and here are the rings of the trees and that's what I think of whenever I think of bone. Um, now each of these dark staining things is an osteocyte. 
okay, and osteocyte means bone cell, okay, and it turns out that all of the everything that's not osteocyte, well, in the middle you do have some blood vessels running through bone, but everything else here is that extracellular matrix, and so this extracellular matrix is made up of a lot of calcium salts it's got a lot of collagen fibers in it and it's a rather hard substance and so what this osteocyte cell there's a little portion that's carved out in the bone makes a little hole and the cell sits in it okay so let's put some of these words up here. So we've got an osteocyte and that is going to osteo means bone and site means cell so literally bone cell okay and the cell that's is going to sit in that hole and the hole is called a lacuna so a hole in the bone that the osteocyte sits in, okay? And your book may sometimes uh, spell it lacuna, and that means, that is plural, okay? That means more than one lacuna, okay? So that is what the osteocyte sits in, is a lacuna. Okay, now cartilage is going to be similar in that it has also a lacuna, okay? And the way I kind of tell it is this dark thing is still the nucleus, but you have this little bit of white space around the edge, okay? And so that's the edges of that hole in the cartilage that it's sitting in, okay? So remember chondro is gonna be cartilage. Site means cells, so the cells in cartilage are called chondrocytes. They also sit in lacuna. And the different types of cartilage here, elastic cartilage is going to have mostly elastic fibers. Fibrocartilage has is really dominated by a large number of collagen fibers and they're in thick bundles, so this type of cartilage is particularly strong. And then hyaline cartilage, uh, collagen fibers are going to also dominate, but they're not organized into thick bundles. So this here is a picture of hyaline cartilage. You can see that it's pretty pink looking throughout. And then I believe I have an image of elastic cartilage. So here, the um, elastic cartilage runs from here to here, okay? And it runs from here over to this side, okay? So all of this is elastic cartilage. Okay, you can see the nucleus sitting in the hole with a little white space around it. So that's a lacuna. But what we notice is we notice dark, thin strings through here. And that's what makes it the elastic cartilage because you can see those elastic fibers pretty clearly. Okay. And so um, one thing I want to point out in your text is you do have these tables running throughout for both epithelial tissue, connective tissue, um, for muscle tissue. You should really know these images. You should know this information, particularly over here where it says locations and functions. Those things need to be memorized if you're going to do well on the next test. Uh, the information is not difficult, I don't think, but it is a fair amount of information and so make sure you don't just take a surface approach that you actually learn the details.